All right, all right. Let the church say amen. Now we at part two. We're still talking about Moses. This is the part two because now we are at the point where Pharaoh still refused to let the children of Israel go free. And in the last video, I was talking about how Pharaoh had those magicians. And now they're trying to mark everything that the Lord do. So now we are up to the ten plagues. The ten plagues because Pharaoh still refused to let the children of Israel go free. So in this video, we're going to talk about the ten plagues. Now let's look at the first thing that happened, the first plague. The water turns into blood. Moses took his rod and struck all the waters in Egypt and turning it all into straight blood, per blood. I mean, all the streams, the rivers, the pools, and everything. Blood ran all the way through Egypt, the land of Egypt. So Pharaoh still had some magicians that was able to do the same thing. So let's see what God allows to happen next. See, this is, I always tell people, when you got God on your side, or your enemy, yeah, go have a hard time trying to defeat you. They really are. Now, since Pharaoh would not steal, he still wouldn't release them after the first plague. Now we look at these frogs. God hit them up with those frogs. Now, God says he's going to smite all the land with frogs causing them frogs to come up from the rivers. And these frogs was all in people's houses, jumping on people, all in the bed chambers. I mean, can you can you imagine if you just was in your house and you had a bunch of frogs around and it was nothing you can do about it? Now, I can see in my spiritual mind now Pharaoh like, oh, man, he put, some, he put some on me with that one. So after Pharaoh see them frogs, he told Moses and Aaron, hey, man, call off this plague. I'm, I'm going to go and let the people go. I let the children of Israel go. Now call this off. So God caused all the frogs to die. Out of the houses, everywhere they was at, he caused them to die. And and see, this, is, this, this goes to show you even Pharaoh started recognizing the power. Yes, he changed his mind. But he still, in so many ways, was refusing to let them go. So now... Why is Pharaoh still hard-headed? Y'all know why. So now we move on to number three. What happens in plague number three? Lice. God told Moses then, have Abram stretch out his rod, strike the dust of the land. So they would become lice throughout the land. This lice then falls on man and beasts. Mm. Then Pharaoh's magicians, they try to do the same thing once again. Okay, we can, we can probably do that too. But this time, they couldn't do it. Hmm. I don't know why people try to mark God and try to be higher than God. Think they can overpower God. You'll never win. The magicians then they had to tell Pharaoh, man, that this work must be the finger of God, since they could not they couldn't do that same thing. They couldn't make those lights come out. But look at Pharaoh still refused to let the people go. So that caused plague number. Four. Y'all know I love the word of God. I try to make it exciting. So what happens in the fourth? Flies. Flies. So now God is forced to release the next plague. A swarm of flies that came upon all the Egyptians went into their houses. These flies, man, came up to came up everywhere, all over Pharaoh's house and, and the serpents' houses, the servants, I mean, excuse me, all over their houses, all over the land. The Bible teaches us that the land became corrupt because of the this huge swarm of flies that attacked the, the, the land. The people and all their living quarters is just tore up. But once again, Pharaoh relents. He tells Moses to have God call off the flies and that I'm going to go and let the people go. I, I, I see this. I see I, I'm not getting nowhere still. I better go and let these people go. So Moses does. And God's called back the flies. Pharaoh once again changed his mind. What's wrong with you, Pharaoh? He changed his mind and still refused to let the people go, which bring you to plaque number five. Pestilence on the livestock. Uh-oh, now look at this next judgment. God calls all of the Egyptians livestock can you imagine all their cattle, their horses, whatever they had, donkeys, camels, oxes, and sheep to be stricken with pestilence that kills all of them dead on the spot? Still, Pharaoh refused to give 
in and let God's people go. What is wrong with you, Pharaoh? So we got to move on to plaque number six, boils. The next judgment, God tell Moses to tell Aaron, take a handful of them ashes from that furnace, scatter toward all of Egypt, causing boils and sores to break out on all the men and the beasts. These boils also hit the Pharaoh's magicians, and they couldn't even stand it. They couldn't stand before Moses no more because them boils was getting the best of them. Kind of make you think about Job and the sores and, and, and the, you know, the sores and that Job had on his body. But Pharaoh still refused to give in. Now, I don't know about y'all. I think I would have gave in out the plaque one. So let's move on to seven. Hell. The next judgment, God calls that heavy hell to rain down on every man, every beast that is not brought inside. That hell, I can just imagine in my spiritual mind how hard it must have hit. He also caused fire to mingle with that hell. So he had that fire mixed in with it. The Bible says that when this hell and fire was released, it struck the whole entire land of Egypt. Both man and beast who were in the fields and every herb, everything was destroyed. Breaking every tree in the fields, you name it. Now, I don't want to be outside when something like that happened. I don't want to be a part of nothing like that. Well, when you keep reading in the New Testament, it's going to be another judgment, people. That's why I say when Christ returns, he's not coming in here to be peaceful. He's coming in here to make war. And if you ain't with the elect and riding with the Lord, you're going to be in bad shape. But, once again, Pharaoh, <laughs> he relented a little bit. So Moses told God, go on, call off the plague. I think Pharaoh going to go and give in this time. But once again, Pharaoh changed his mind, people. He just not getting it, is he? So when you move on to the eighth plague, that's when the locusts come on. The next plague God causes those locusts swarm the face of the earth so that no man can see. Can you believe that? The land of the whole land of Egypt was completely darkened. God Almighty. Darkened once again. But Pharaoh says that he will go on and let the people go. So God pulled back the plague. But can you imagine just pause for a moment and think about, look at where you at and you couldn't see nothing. It's just darkness. You, you, you can't even see what's going on, no light. You just start trying to walk and you run into people. Or you might run into an animal. You, don't, you can't see. That's scary. So Pharaoh changed his mind once again. So now we got to move on to the ninth one. Straight darkness. Darkness. The next judgment, God tells Moses to stretch out your hand toward heaven. And this then causes complete darkness to cover the whole entire land of Egypt. See, this darkness went even thick, thicker than the other one. This thick darkness, but here's the thing about this one, it lasted three days. People couldn't even see one another. Couldn't see nothing. They could not see even one inch in front of their faces. Now, that's deep, people. That's total darkness. Pharaoh changed his mind once again. He gives in a little bit, but then we see he changes his mind again. So what did God have to do? What did God have to do next? The final and tenth plague, and I'll let you go after this. The last judgment. God had all of the firstborn killed. <laughs> I want to tell people, don't play with God. God had all, he would have all the firstborn strike dead by an angel of death. However, though, God tells his people to sprinkle the blood of the blemish-free lamb on their doorposts in order to keep this angel of death from killing their firstborn. And at midnight, this angel strikes. And it kills all the firstborns of Pharaoh, his servants, all of his people, and all of his livestock. That judgment right there, that's the one that finally, finally broke Pharaoh down. And he agreed to let the Israelites go. The word of God teaches us that the Israelites had been kept under the Egyptian bondage for, we all know, it was about 430 years. 
Man, that's a long time. The Israelites then start to leave. But there is now one more big event that must happen before they finally set free for good. And that will be the pardon of the Red Sea, which we will go into in the next video. The pardon of the Red Sea. God bless you and God keep you. Thank y'all for following along until the next one. The pardon of the Red Sea. Y'all remain blessed. Love you.